You are listening to the Love Up Gaming Podcast, episode 165, Inspiration versus Insight. In today's episode, we discuss player inspiration versus insight. We discuss how long to give your players to figure out your story. We also discuss when it's okay to allow a character's knowledge to fill in the blanks. If you'd like to participate in the discussion or leave us feedback, you can contact us at levelupyourgamingpodcast at gmail.com or find us on Facebook at facebook.com slash levelupyourgaming. If you like the content and want to hear more of the show, subscribe and we'll ensure you don't miss an episode. New episodes come out almost every Wednesday. Also, please review, tell a friend about the podcast, or share with your gaming group. Now sit back and enjoy the episode. Welcome to the Level Up Your Gaming Podcast. My name is Aaron. I did the countdown right this week. So, hey, Josh, how are you doing? <laughs> you know... <laughs> I do appreciate when the count done goes in order so I don't get confused. No, I'm doing pretty good. How you doing, Aaron? I'm doing great. I'm doing great. Just got back from a, uh, a little road trip with the family and uh, fully refreshed after a longer weekend and back to tackle uh, tackle the world. You know? Yeah, so. that's good. That th- you went on a road trip somewhere you've been before? Yes, yes. Went to go visit the family. No. Yeah. Yeah. Do do you have the trip memorized, or do you still have to use Google? No, Maps? I now I have to use GPS because I, I moved. I mean, I know most of the trip, so yeah, yeah. There's there's some places when I go, even if they're clear across the country, I'll be like, I just know where I'm at, and I don't have to like look at the map. And then there's other places, even around town, I can get ninety percent of the way to you and forget which road I'm supposed to turn down, which is you know. Just killing me. Yeah, yeah. So, I mean, they, obviously, you're trying to tie us into our topic. <laughs> a little bit. You know, how much is is good for player knowledge and how much of it's character knowledge? Because, like, I've got, you know, we all have uh, a global mapping system in our pocket at all times. But, you know, w- what separates us from the information that we have? Well, so that there is the the ultimate, you know, the, 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 this is the ultimate question that any GM I think has to ask themselves as the, as they go through the gaming uh, process with their group, which is, you know, how much of how much do you allow the blur of player knowledge into your character knowledge, and how do you? Uh, you know, how do you bridge those gaps when the the player doesn't know what to do next, but the character probably would. Okay. Um, mm-hmm. I thought about this in the context of like, you know, listening to uh, like live plays as well. Like this is kind of where I, I, I came to me where I was thinking about this. It was just like, in order to keep a live play moving, there has to be a lot of the characters know what to do next, okay? Because even though there is a lot of inspiration where the characters can move the the, the pieces across the board, there's a lot of hand waving where the characters kind of know what they need to do. <laughs> yeah, and so that's where where this uh where this comes into play, and. You know that's that, that that that's where I was thinking about this. It's the same thing where I have, um, I have this you know in, in our group, which is you know well what what you know what do the characters know? What do they not know? And how much how much do they know? And like if you know a lot about a certain subject, how much do you let a player inject that into the game when the character clearly wouldn't know that? Like. You're you're playing it on both sides, so there's this this, this very delicate pl- uh, balancing act, I should say, that you are playing as the GM to try to keep the game uh, moving, but also not detract from the fun of the players itself. Yeah, I run into quite a bit of that um, in my game. I like, and it, it works both ways. Uh, when I'm playing family games, uh, my family they they know the. Tr- the, the fantasy stuff they 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 get it they enjoy it uh but they aren't you know they aren't as well read in fantasy or in other genres that we might be playing 
my wife will pick up horror tropes like crazy and exactly knows where to go with things, but the kids don't. Uh, when I'm playing with uh, the guys, you know, we're playing the the the, the big campaign or whatnot. Um, I'm playing with a bunch of nerdy engineers and programmers. So these guys, like, they are way more well versed on things than their characters have any right to be. And there's always that, you know. <laughs> yes, that is how things would work. But <laughs> and you're playing that in a cyberpunk. Game. <laughs> oh yeah, absolutely. No, it was it one of the first. Uh, the, the the first mission was the assault on the office complex and they were trying to look for information and I gave them the bleakest version of working in an office complex and I got immediate feedback of that's too real stop it so I think I did my job well um, but it was it was it's it's all about you know separating what does a character know what does the player know and how much of the that should blur together yeah no what, I, I, what what do you think what what do you do again so again like i said it's a delicate balancing act i tend to lean more towards uh you know grease in the wheels and let and let the players kind of move the way that they need to move um thankfully my group has been together for a very long time and uh you know we are trying to play as best we can within the bounds of our character. Um, now, what's very interesting in that same regard is one time I thought it would be too much of a stretch uh, for my for my character to have made a cognitive leap in the game, and I brought that up to to Jared, who was GMing at the time, and he said he said no, that's perfectly within the bounds. He's like, you know, your character can you know, infer information just like you can. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I get it. Like I've, I've run into the situation. Um, cyberpunk is great for this because, you know, this is set in a, uh, a close enough future that the characters should know more about the world or about how things work in a similar way that we currently know things. Uh, they've got access to information. Um, it, the game is very, you know, information heavy, so I don't have to worry about it as much. Uh, and if you think, yeah, somebody who's a big bruiser might not know all the intricacies of how the computer systems work, but that's fine because these are fantasy computer systems and they don't exactly share the same rules as the systems that my players work on every day um and that changes when you talk about like fantasy games because you know you've got magic you've got uh um fantasy races you've got uh, low technology maybe low technology you could have a high technology fantasy game that's always a lot of fun too but um there's there's a certain bit of uh meta gaming that just occurs not because I think the players are trying to metagame, but because you recognize things and you react in the way that you would expect to react. Um, I've seen a lot of people post, you know, DMs, GMs talk about, you know, how do you deal with metagaming? And there's there's the um, metagame at your own risk style of thought where let your let your players do it. But also, if you notice them doing it, you don't have to stick with, uh, you can homebrew monsters a certain way. You can change where things are located. You can make, you know, the people who are metagaming run into bad situations. And that's that's fine, but I don't think punishing your players is the way to do it. No, I agree. You don't, you don't want to punish your players. For, I mean, again, if, if your players are constantly metagaming their way through like a fantasy setting, and it's like it's like you encounter this, you know, you describe the creature, and they're like, like, okay, well, I know I need to use fire to kill this thing, <laughs> like that'll do double damage, and also the the creature's blind spots on its left and right, so we can flank it for advanced tech, <laughs> like it's a little too on the nose, 
And, you know, it's like, okay, you, you're, you're probably going to get bit by that once, but after that, that one that you get bit by, you either got to say, listen, no more of that. Like, you know, encounter these with the, with the knowledge that your characters have or change, just, you're right. Change things up. You can, you can modify monsters to make them more terrifying, more unexpected. Um, especially when you're working in such a world as D and D and the more that you play a game, the more likely it is that your characters will attain some mastery over the systems and then we'll start to learn things about the, the systems that make it hard for them to, you know, it, 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 it's hard to pull back the curtain once you understand that, like, like this monster takes double damage from psychic attacks. <laughs> like, well, you could treat it like uh, Iron Man from the Marvel movies in that every time he was defeated, he went and specifically engineered a response to that. So, yeah, you flank the guys from his blind spot the last time. Well, the next time you fight these guys, now they're extra armored on that side and have, I don't know, snipers covering them. Uh, it, it takes double damage from psychic attacks. So now it's wearing some sort of psychic headband that prevents psychic damage and gives feedback to anybody giving it psychic damage. You know, you can, you can play with the metagaming and the, the monsters maybe are metagaming back. It's one of those things. Anytime you let a player do something that's, you know, just beyond the bounds of the rules, let your let your NPCs do it. Back to them. Make it, you know, hey, we're we're in an arms race at times. And it's much more interesting if if you try something just absolutely insane and the characters in the world pick up on it and start to use it against you. And that could be fun too. Yeah, so that 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 that's going against like the the complete opposite, which your players know know too much and they have way too high of a knowledge base outside their characters and they're implicitly implying all that into their character knowledge as well the other side of this is legitimate like you got no idea your, your character should know what to do your character has the knowledge mm -hmm. and you guys are just stuck or you're just like like my character has a has has you know has you know cryptid history and like you know he's he's a master he's got 25 wisdom and then you encounter this like a mind flare you're like i've got no idea what this is <laughs> yeah or like you encounter mothman and and the player's like who's mothman and the character would be like holy crap it's mothman and yeah i get it i get it we, there was uh there was a game that we were playing and I went a little too realism with it. I, I was explaining, you know, sights and sounds as they're walking through and they're asking questions. And I gave very detailed, like, just how a fantasy world would actually work. You'd have, you know, uh, people throwing out the chamber pots, stuff like that, onto the the ditch behind the house and having the gutter and you know i was describing things that were way too much but because the players weren't as versed in the genre at the time uh they thought that those were plot hooks and were following along with the plot hook <laughs> when the characters <laughs> in the world would be like yeah that's just how things are right <laughs> Yeah, there, there, therein lies the the what the characters know versus what they don't know. And sort of where I thought about this originally was the insight versus inspiration side of this, which was like the one one of the interesting things about the investigation role in White Wolf is that not only is it supposed to um, give you information, but it's also supposed to infer. Uh, implicit clues when you roll the skill okay and so that means that based on the number of successes you get you should be able to tell a player you all you understand x y and z about this event there and like this is the, where the delicate line comes in which is you're sort of like balancing do i want to give them this information because they rolled really well or do i want to say like like do i how much do i let my players kind of work through it 
because they rolled it well. Also, if you're just that skilled in something, like why do you let your players flounder at the same point in time? Like that's 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 the balance that I I you know I find myself always fighting in a game. And like this comes into like if you you know we're gonna talk about at some point streamlining your gameplay. But this is exactly how you streamline gameplay, which is if your players have a skill or a knowledge or, or like the ki- the character sheet has a skill or a knowledge that the player may not have. Let's say that you've got a player who typically plays a barbarian, you know, fighter, physical bruiser person. They decide to make a very mental character, but that's just not their play style. Like mm-hmm. you might need to give them a lot of information because don't know how to infer that through their players play style typically players will play what they're comfortable playing but every now and then like you're gonna get somebody who wants to step out of that comfort zone for the first time and this is where that really comes in like it's just crazy i'm just gonna highlight this bit of my notes that you can see here uh, sometimes a wizard down. rolls a barbarian sometimes a barbarian rolls a wizard yeah Sometimes you just want to play outside your class, and that's fine. But you know, when your your player's stats don't line up with your character's stats, then you you do run into that. Uh, how are you going to to handle it? Yeah, exactly. I mean, it, it, you 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 have to be willing to give some information there, which is the 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 insight version of what your characters know. Like your characters should have have an implicit knowledge about how things work, or you know if the characters are stuck, you better have a role to to unstick them. You know if they're playing something outside of their their knowledge base, you better be able to give them that. Um, you know, a, 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 you know the get out of jail free card, the the keep the plot moving card, whatever it is. And if no one wants to make that role and no one can succeed in that role, or maybe the role might be too dangerous because if I don't give them the information, it's too bad, then you might have to make a choice just to give them information. <laughs> they just gotta let it happen. <laughs> so um, I mentioned earlier to you, uh, I've been playing Baldur's Gate 3, and uh, one of the things that struck me, like really stood out for me, was that there's a number of spots where you will make a role and the difficulty is two. The difficulty is literally don't fail. Don't fail. And you, you can do this because in that world, these sort of characters would know how to do these things or they would get into a situation where this would be just like second nature as long as you don't screw it up too badly. And incorporating that into your game might be a way to deal with this. You know, just you want to figure out how to do something to roll and just don't fail. But then of course that does lead into the whole thing we've talked about before is that if you don't have any reason for your characters to fail or failing would actually uh, break your storyline because now they're just going to stand around for the next, until something terrible happens. Don't, don't make them roll. Just have them like, there, 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 and lies my thing. Is why is Baldur's yeah. Gate making you roll for that? Because you could fail. <laughs> because it's funnier in a video game. It's you could restart. Like, it, it, it can't really. Like, if you do that in a campaign, it's just annoying. But like, just have them. You because you, you could fail, and then if you do fail, like again, it, you put the roll in front of somebody, they can fail, and then what do you do again? Well, roll again. Okay. That looks bad. <laughs> it does. It absolutely does. Um, well, and you know, it. I I thought it was interesting that they did have those. You know, a DC of two, where you can just like, as long as you don't screw it up too badly. And I don't know. It's a computer game. For all I know, it could be a, a mock roll where the outcome is automatically set to be above two no matter what the dice are because it's not real dice it's just in the computer right maybe I've been playing cyberpunk too long and I just assume that the computers are lying to me so that's an option too there well (laughs) (laughs) I I get you you, to give that role again you don't don't we've talked about it before don't make players make roles that are unnecessary because technically you could just say, I'm going to take a 10 
Mm-hmm. Like, I mean, it's a, it's a very common house rule. I don't know if that's a, a base rule in the book it's or not. Not anymore. Okay. I think it was at one point. Got it. Okay. So like, but wh- why not just allow them to take it? Yeah. I, mean, I mean, like if it, you're going to do the whole, you know, like, Hey, let me see if you know what this would be. And then roll something behind the, 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 the DM screen and just tell them that they succeeded. Like, Give them the illusion that they might not know this just so that they have the illusion that it's a possibility, but you know, don't, don't make them fail. Yeah. Don't, don't, don't make them fail. Just, you got, you just got to grease those wheels. And again, the player should know somebody in the party probably should know. You should be familiar enough with the characters to know that yes, you have enough of this and you've got this skill. So yes, you probably know how to get through this problem. Okay. And so that way you can justify it. Anytime that your players get stuck, I can give somebody a piece of information and then let them do with it what they may. Okay. Now that means that you could give somebody a piece of information and they totally just sit on it and don't communicate it with players. A lot of times if the GM says something to a player, the player will implicitly believe that everybody else at the table also heard that piece of information. Oh yeah. <laughs> um, which oh, which yeah. is, is another, another an entirely different problem, but <laughs> I, I like also where the GM is talking. And so every player at the table assumes that somebody else is paying attention. So nobody does. Yep. And then, then we all forget what we're supposed to go do. And then you're like, Oh, well, what what happened with that guy? The the one they just had an entire evening talking with? You you don't remember anything about the okay, cool. Um but that's you know that's your players. You should KYP, kill your party. Um no, know your players. <laughs> uh you should definitely know if you're the if you're if you're with. a vindictive GM, kill your players. <laughs> if you're if you're if you're listening I to Level Up Your Gaming Podcast, know your players. Uh, I I have been a very vindictive GM at times. Uh, but yeah, no, it's it's important that uh, you know you you provide your players with the information that the characters would know, and make sure that you keep keep it moving keep the story moving without you don't want to railroad them you don't want to say you're going here you would say something along the lines of you know the next place that you could go is here or here give them options In- insight them can options. be be re- reviewing information that they've known or you know again your character is versed in a skill so your insight lets you say well you know that you could talk to so and so or so and so because you know the, these are people that you know would be knowledgeable about the thing you're talking about so mm-hmm. like it gives the players some options okay probably steering them in a direction that you would want them to go okay at that point because obviously now the players are stuck or the player doesn't know what to do um but you know that that's that's okay because you know you don't want your players to be stuck St- stuck is stuck is the word stopped in in a, in a game is the worst place yeah. to be okay and so so at, at the worst case you the minimum insight you should be able to give your players is just enough to keep them moving in a game you know we mm-hmm. want motion in the game you only want them stopped when they are conversing about themselves and you know then you just give them the kick in the butt to get them moving again when you, you need to get them moving again but you know at the same time you know the other side of this is inspiration players are going to infer things keep, keep in mind if a player infers information based on what has been given within the story or because the player has picked up on the trope maybe you're trying to tell don't punish the player for that like that's good player like that's that's yeah. great on your player you want them to do that that means they're that you're engaged giving them... in your story. They're enjoying it. Now, if if the player has on the other side, like has gone too far, which is they they are now using information that they do not know about, or that they should have no business knowing about. It's not. It's not. I didn't pick this up through cues in your story. I picked this up because I just know this about red dragons. <laughs> or if they're building a railgun in a fantasy setting because they think that this will take out said dragon, that's. You know, 
that's not a thing that exists in this world. And where are you finding electromagnets? Yeah, genre busting things. You can't let players just bring it, whatever they want into your no. into your setting uh, to, to to move things along. But again, it, it, it's there is an extent at which you might allow unknown knowledge to the character that the player has. So, like the famous example that I've used in the past has been, or that I think Jerry used in the past was like sailing. Like you know it. If your player suddenly knows, if your character suddenly starts speaking in some nautical terms, like it's not totally game breaking. No. <laughs> Maybe they spent a, a couple of weeks working on a dock and they pick some things up. Just mix it into the backstory a little bit. It's fine. If your character knows how to like work their way through like a carpentry problem, you could theoretically say that that is semi common knowledge within the, in the world itself yeah so, knowing how to do it and actually doing it can be completely different things i've watched a lot of youtube videos on a lot of things doesn't mean i should be building a house but i could try it's magic tube in my fantasy world <laughs> mag magic tube <sighs> those those videos the little short ones that they show on those rocks that you just keep flipping through yeah, yeah, I kill. I, I, I just spent fifteen seconds of magic. Too. So I oh, never learned it. The worst <laughs> downfall of many a kingdom. That magic too. <laughs> no, and it, I, I it really enjoy when the players, my players, have picked up on the tropes or the story beats that I've laid down, and like go to the next step without you know explicit information about it. Because that just means they're they're picking it up, they're recognizing the story, they're engaged in the story, and they're enjoying it. Um, when you've laid down the information and they just don't, you know, then you sort of have to step in. You have to give them a little bit of options. Um, I have uh, done recaps at the beginning of sessions. I like recaps at the beginning of sessions just to make sure that people know, you know, one information was given out the last time um, and make sure that everybody is on the same page with what information is available. Uh, there are, you know, it, hopefully the information that was provided in game is enough for the players to figure out where they're going. But if there is a difference between player knowledge and character knowledge and it's a deficit to the player then yeah definitely gonna have to figure something out yeah i mean again it's 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 about moving the players along it's not not getting them stuck somewhere and then you know it, 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 it's it's always worse if they get completely stuck and then you have to like through divine intervention move them to the next part of the story like it's 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 infinitely worse than you reminding the players that like you know you got this piece of information or you remember this piece of information or your character would know this or this but then there's also the thing of you know you have to be careful with that because the inside part of this might only be relevant if you know your character so sometimes the, the, the inspiration side of this comes in where like knowing something about a magic object or like a magic item like a common one if i give you the the item itself in the game you know it is cool like at that point where like if you know about it but your character probably also possesses the knowledge about it that you can kind of just meld that into existence because you have the external knowledge of it like that's also very fun and useful as well so like i i, I think there's a you know there, there's a it's it's just it's finding the right balance of when to do to A versus B. Like you don't want to just be like you stumble upon the dead body, and I'm going to tell you everything about it because you've got a good a good wisdom score. Or something. Yeah, well, you know, just just a couple of things. Yeah, it, um, I'm reminded of the Dungeons and Dragons movie from earlier this year. Also, uh, there was at least one or two points when the characters 
would roll up in a situation and one of them would turn to the other one and says, I know this, this is from this, 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 or like, I remember this, this is one of these things. And that sort of knowledge by your players is fantastic. And, you know, maybe make them do a roll just to confirm or whatnot, but, you know, they're engaged. And we want that. We want our players to be having a good time and be engaged in the story. So don't punish. Metagaming, when they're, you know, trying to, to cheese your game or, or break things, well, you know, letting your players metagame uh, at their own risk, like I said before, is a great way to do it. Um, but these stories are coming from your head. Even if they're coming from a like a pre-gen module, those are guides. Those aren't, you know, set in stone. They're more like guidelines. So, <laughs> yeah. Who cares about rules? Rules are for people that follow them. <laughs> Not for those of us that break them. So yeah. Um yeah, you got anything else you want to add to this one, Josh? Uh you know, just looking forward to to doing some more gaming. Yeah. 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 Uh, I, I so I, I, I want to tease the idea of us you know talk about some of these one shots here. I think you came up with a great acronym for it. <laughs> yeah. Um uh, I was talking with Aaron about uh, having a couple of sessions where we would go through and sort of design and write up a one shot. And uh, I was walking and talking with my wife and I said, let's make a one shot. She goes, LMAO. I'm like, Oh no. (laughs) So we're going to have some laughing my one shots off. Exactly. That doesn't work that way. <laughs> but uh, no, I, I want to tease them because I know uh, I, we, I talked to Josh about this or Josh brought it up to me. And I think it'd be fun for us to kind of apply some of the stuff. You know, he thinks, well, he thought it would be fun to apply some of this stuff to, to what we uh, we talk about here. And so we'll uh, we'll have a couple of the level up your gaming one shots pop up here and there. Uh, you know, it's just an idea. They're not going to be actual one shot gameplay, but it'll just be us kind of noodling and canoodling about how to make a a one shot, and you know, uh, you know, giving you ideas and practical applications to what we talk about here within the podcast. So, stay tuned for a couple of those episodes. And if we get really bored, maybe we'll write it up, and you'll be able to download it from somewhere. There you go. There you go. So that's going to wrap us up for the week on insight versus inspiration. Uh, if you have any thoughts on, you know, how far you let your players go, how much information you like to give them, uh, you know, when, when you let them get stuck, when you think metagaming has gone too far, let us know level per gaming podcast at gmail.com or facebook.com slash level per gaming. Also the podcast is on YouTube. So smash the like button there, subscribe, uh, or go to your favorite podcast site, which is the preferred way, uh, Subscribe to it there, review it, recommend to a friend, all that good stuff. And that's going to wrap us up for the week. So for Josh, I'm Aaron. Have a good week, everyone. Bye.